build your data science, machine learning, and AI career with the trans org analytics for growth, cutting edge tools, and impactful projects. Hello, wonderful attendees. I'm your host, Dalvinder Kaur from lovely professional university. Get ready to dive into today's topic that is building a career in data science, machine learning, and AI with the trans org analytics. Before we proceed further, allow me to introduce the experts of the day, Dr. Amrit Pal Singh, Associate Professor, School of Computer Science and Engineering, lovely professional university. Dr. Amrit Pal, an eminent authority in the field of databases, big data analytics, Apache Spark and more. Dr. Singh brings to the table a wealth of knowledge and expertise, backed by a doctor of philosophy in computer science from lovely professional university. So now I would uh, like to introduce uh, Mr. Vishad Dube, Director Data Science uh, Transorg Analytics, with over 10 years of experience in strategy consulting across various industries. Mr. Vishad specializes in data analytics and machine learning techniques to drive business growth. So now I would uh, like to introduce admission nominee also in this webinar, Mr. Ashish Kumar Sharma, a former journalist turned academic counselor with 10 years of experience currently serving as a senior officer and territory head in tie-up and public relations at lovely professional university. Before we proceed further in today's session, I would like to request everyone for any questions you can write in the chat box or in the Q&A box or same will be addressed from my side in the end of this webinar. And now I hand over the thanks to Dr. Amrit Pa and Mr. Bishad. And it would be an absolute delight to listen from them. Over to you both. Okay, thank you, ma'am, uh, for this uh, lovely introduction. So we all are aware that the data is a new oil, like, like the oil data is valuable, right? But if it's unrefined, it can't be used. So in the same way, uh, we data must be broken down, analyzed for it, for its value. So here comes the uh, the concept of data science. So I would like to uh, uh, like uh, introduce uh, today's expert, uh, Mr. Vishet Dobe. He'll be taking us, uh, he'll be guiding us that how we can make a career in this field. So over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amit Pal. Thank you, Dilvinder, for sweet introduction. And thank you, LPU, for having me again and again. And uh, welcome most uh, most of you on the webinar. So I'll share my screen. We'll switch over to the agenda for the day. That is building your career using data science. Just allow me a second, please. I hope my screen is visible. Your screen is visible. You can continue, yes, Mr. Vishal. All right. All right. So before I switch uh, to the presentation mode, I'll just again reiterate. So my experience has been almost more than 10, closing to 11, 12 years. And I'm, I'm MBA from I'm Cozy Code. Most of my interest, my career has been into the field of data where we've been using data to create analytics objectives from it and helping different business. Here in Transorg, we help business solve their uh, problems using data science as a tool. So as of today, what the different topics that we would be covering would be related to what is data science actually, what are some of the world problems that can be solved and are being solved using data science, what are the industry trends, job roles, uh, different kind of remuneration packages that you can expect, why should you pick a career in data science, and how do you prepare for a career in data science. So let's move, uh, move ahead. Uh, so... Uh, what is the data science universe? So data science universe is a multidisciplinary field. It's not about having knowledge of one particular aspect of coding or any other languages. It cuts across various disciplines and fields like mathematics, machine learning, which is a subset, computer programming, statistical modeling, engineering, visualization, conceptual recognition of the patterns, learning from those patterns. You model for uncertainty at so at a big data level, you create warehouses to store your data. And cloud computing is the framework that most of us are aware of, which enables all this hands-on working. So let's move ahead. So why has data science come into work? So like Dr. Amrit was just saying uh, just a minute earlier that it is the new oil. And when we say oil, because it is as valuable as oil in uh, giving insight into different aspects of our life, be it our professional life, or even if we realize all our subconscious decisions are based on different data points. 
So in recent, in last decade, at least we have seen an exponential rise in the way the data is being churned out from different systems or it is being consumed by all strategic and operational work that is happening into big corporates. What has happened? There is an explosive growth. If you look at the left side of the slide and the, the points mentioned below that 90% of all the data in our history has been there in last two to three years. And there have been rapidly going. And even in that, we have to be uh, mindful of the fact that most of the data today exists as an unstructured data. So what is the basic difference between structured data and unstructured data? So structured data is anything that can be converted or exists as um, in a table form, like all the tables or the CSV files or the RDBMS relational databases that we see are known as structured data. While unstructured data is anything which at least at the time of inception doesn't exist as in a tabular form. For that could be a video data, an audio data or a text file. So what has been the evolution over the years? So continuing the thought from the last slide. So if you look from 50s where there were a sparsity of having different kind of techniques on working of the data, we were solely relying on statistical techniques, which we hear about. It's like string matching, similarity or estimating Z score value, P value. Then therein, when we moved towards 80s, we had in the decade of 17 to 80s, a lot of data mining techniques came into play. Meaning to say when we were able to question our data set and derive insights. Now beyond 80s, what happened once we were able to get the insight, we were able to build in the flavor of business intelligence, which is to say that once we have the insight, can we use that insight to intelligently answer our business questions? Now from intelligence, we may move to analytics. Now analytics, when the word analytics comes into play, it on doesn't look at the problem at hand from the data, which is there currently, but also it learns the pattern that is hidden and within data set and try to make prediction of the future. So all kind of analytics, the enablers, of course, were the existence or the exponential growth in use of internet and web tools. Big data analytics is a build up on data analytics with the uh, fact that when you have quant large amount of data and when I when we say large amount of data, what we basically mean is terabytes of data. So here the most of the key enablers were sensors, the base devices or the IOTs wherein Alexa in itself is a very good example, which is sitting on large amount of data and is able to interact. So. Uh, just a second, let's move to another slide. Uh, what are the different data science trends that we are looking at? So on the left, if you see the most important trends that are there in uh, data science is about big data. Now, what are the different subcategories where it is being used is in uh, virtual reality, augmented analytics, on natural language processing, on data science and AI enabled tools, on having uh, different kinds of blockchains, cryptocurrencies are also built on the uh, concept of blockchain, which is again a derivative of data science technologies. And if you talk in terms of languages which are most used, Python is still uh, is a hands-on winner. Uh, closely following is something as R and Julia is somehow being um, somehow taking lead, but we still believe as uh, what we see in our daily corporate interaction with uh, stalwarts of the industry is Python is the best tool for any kind of development and also for data science usage. Let's move ahead. So like we were talking in the previous slide, there were different kind, there are different fields wherein we can uh, use uh, data science as a tool. So we can use it in, in social media analytics, we can use it in e-commerce analytics, we can use it in mobility al analytics, what we see in GMAPs of the words wherein the data science per se is being used to uh, find the best route and the time for the commuters. Banking has been one of the earliest adopters of the field of data science. All our credit card decision making, fraud uh, prevention, everything uses data science. Even in the field of social media and entertainment, you, we have data science when, when we interact with different OTT platforms. L uh, let's say we have Netflix or Spotify of the world. A lot of recommendation that is being made to the end user is based on data science. You, in, in the field of healthcare, it is recently finding its footing, but a lot of um, 
universities and a lot of medical centers in US and a little bit in Europe and India also are making their decisions, at least the initial as analysis of it using robots and data science uh, tools. A home, uh, smart homes, like we already know, a lot of smart homes are coming up with the concept of using automated tools for uh, running the operations within a small home. Uh, again, all the smart appliances like TVs, um, Alexas, Google Minis, Spotify's are being run using at the tip of the button. Uh, in the field of automotives, we see beyond Google Maps, we see that the driverless cars are being manufactured, conceived. We have automa automated vehicles running, which involves least or to no manual intervention. That is, again, based on the concept of data science in general and AI as a subset. So a lot of neural network work goes into building such kind of autonomous tools. And in general, a lot of corporate decision makings and uh, strategic building happens using data science as a tool. Okay, so breaking down into the different aspects of our business functionalities where data science play a role is one into having insights, deriving insights from your data. Then a level up of the value chain is making your decision based on those insights. And third, of course, is to put uh, those decisions and the strategy developed into actions. Not depending on the value chain of data science level uh, or the insights that can be developed, we have different aspects of um, data science or the different stages of data science. So let's say we are just using data science or a uh, or a dashboard or a tool for visualization. So it is something harboring on insights wherein we work on the data and we create insights out of that. Then we, there comes the next stage wherein we are also doing a what if root cause, cause kind of analysis that, okay, we have the insight, we want to look at something. So what is the uh, repercussion or what is the advantage of using this particular data point or this particular insight? So that goes into building the business intelligence. Then there could be scenario analysis or simulation analysis that from the previous stages, I have done the root cause analysis and I want to do these things to reach this particular endpoint. So I can run simulations even before taking the actions and see what are the possible pros and cons of running those uh, uh, action points. Uh, beyond simulation is then the basis on the results that we have. We can run heuristic rule-based systems or we can even have advanced AI-based systems which can optimize our decision making. And beyond that, of course, we can take actual actions, strategic actions by using a lot natural language. So Gen AI that we are seeing is one of the uh, very good example where you use natural language to actually run automated tools. These in the terms of machine learning field are known as descriptive analysis where you describe the data set. You use a statistical technique to get the mean, median, mode and different other mathematical or computational parameters. Then you do the diagnostic analytics when you work on that data set and try to understand what is the structure or why are we having this kind of, let's say, mean. So if the particular revenue mean is going up. What is the main reason behind of it? Predictive analytics is once you're based on understanding of your data completely, you create machine learning models to predict for an uncertain future. And prescriptive analysis is once you have created the prediction, you want to prescribe a particular strategic or action plan for a particular business use case. So the, let's say a very simple example, a business wants to increase their revenue, a, a firm which is into retail customer segments, they will look at the, the purchasing behavior or a demographic behavior of their customers. Then they might one run a diagnostic analytics to understand which kind of customer, when do they buy, what do they buy, and at what price point do they buy. Then they can uh, do a predictive analytics to predict okay in the near future of let's say uh, three months six months or 12 months who will buy what will they buy and what price point they will they buy and what quantity will they buy and based on these analysis you can define a prescriptive analytics so as to say okay let's have strategy x for this customer segment strategy y for this customer segment okay let's move ahead so um some insight uh, from the industry um, uh, key facts. So by 2026, it's a global number that we have pulled together from our secondary research. We expect to see 11.5 million jobs directly or indirectly related to analytics and data science. Uh, more than a million almost position related to data science, which is kind of an old 
subset or a development over building basic basic intelligence and 60 percent of those jobs for sure would be in india because india because of its technical competency and growth trajectory is looking to become uh, the third most active player in the field of data science and artificial intelligence 33.5 percent is the rate at which indian data science industry is going year on year so we see a very bright future for young data scientists in the field of data science and in terms, if you talk about salary packages and remunerations, we have generally seen that uh, a true data scientist turns to use on an average two x the times of a normal uh, a person from a SDE field. Okay, let's uh, move ahead. So these are different kind of job roles that you can expect or we usually see in the field of data science. So data analyst, it's the responsibility, of course, in one line is someone who collects the data and looks at the data and try to create a picture or try to make sense of that data. So, and how do you make create a picture? It's like you use some kind of visualization tool. It can be something as simple as uh, Excel dashboard or something a little bit advanced like Microsoft Power BI or Tableau tool. Okay. The, the basic understanding what is, or the basic skill set that is required here is to be comfortable with different kinds of statistical tools and different kind of data manipulation techniques. Going to the next uh, aspect of it in terms of uh, roles and responsibilities comes the, the role of a data engineer whose basic responsibility is to provide technical skills to maintain the flow of data from the source systems to the end cons consumption layer. So what are the sub steps that a data engineer is responsible for is the L steps of ingestion processing, what you call surfacing is to bring it to the real world to the end user. And of course, maintaining the proper storage, <laughs> excuse me. So what are the different skill sets that are required? So these are some of the tools. There are a lot many tools beyond uh, Apache, Hadoop, NoSQL, Spark, there are the world of cloud and everything also exists where which can help you in building pipelines in the as a data engineer. Next comes the role of a machine learning engineer. So what are the job responsibilities of a typical machine learning engineer? So it that person is basically responsible for creating system based solutions that are working or based on machine learning models. So they run all those models, do the experiments, do the test, and finally conceive on the best ML algorithm, machine learning algorithms for a given business use case. So it has a very distinct skill set as against a, a data a base level data analyst or a data engineer. So that person needs, of course, uh, any of the advanced fields in terms of uh, CS or mathematics helps a lot. But that person also needs to be comfortable with different programming languages, data structures, big data. And for deployment, basically this deployment part comes under the purview of a solution architect. But a machine learning engineer, when if he's aware of this whole concept of deployment, is able to write a very uh, strategic uh, uh, languages or scripts, which would be eventually helping the solution architect to deploy the solution. Beyond that is the world or the role that we know as data scientist. So a data scientist is someone who has not only uh, the ability to understand about the machine learning algorithms, but that person also needs to understand the business aspect or the use case for which the particular algorithm is being used. So presenting the information in data visualization is required because at times, in the corporate world, at least the people that we interact with CXOs of different corporates are not very tech savvy to understand why a particular model is resulting into this kind of a positive or a negative value. So a data scientist during his tenure, uh, once he moves up the experience uh, learning curve, is should be also able to present the final analysis in, in a language or in a form that is understandable or is consumable by the business. So the skill set that are required in becoming a competent data scientist are different statistical tool. And as we speak, we have moved a lot ahead in terms of using the statistical tools. They are, they now they come as an inbuilt libraries for a language like Python. SQL is one of the most important uh, tool that is required for tabular data or a CSV kind of data when it is being consumed as relational database, machine learning, is something the the understanding of the algorithms feature engineering means that play being able to 
play with the different feature that go into building a particular model. Data visualization, like we have uh, talked about that end model or end output should be able to get converted into a presentable form, which is which can be consumed by the business stakeholders. And then of course the maths of uh, maths come into picture while building the model about probabilities and statistics. Okay, uh, let's move ahead. All right. So coming to the point of what are the different kind of average salaries that we usually see in the world of corporate. So depending on the experience, location, skills, and company, different uh, roles that we've talked about are data scientists and data engineer and data analyst. These are the numbers that we look at. And these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, why would you see uh, a little bit higher on the data engineer side? Because in a typical data uh, science or a machine learning system building or a solution building life cycle most of the work at the on at the onset is done by a data engineer or a solution architect so uh, once they build the bench uh, the whole boilerplate system or the workbench for the data scientist then a data scientist contributes but what we are recommending all our freshers and interns is to have a little bit of knowledge of all the three dimension of a data science field. So having knowledge of machine learning, having knowledge of data engineering, and also being able to work with the raw data as a data analyst and making uh, business intelligence observation out of it. Okay, let's move ahead. So this is something that was in reference to we are completely out of COVID situation right now, but we saw a strong dip in the utility of a data science, which was still at, at least at that point being considered as an auxiliary service rather than a necessary operational um, service. But we have comfortably come out of that period and now we are seeing an up in terms of uh, client requirements or even the existing clients are coming back to us again and again asking for different kinds of data science uh, based projects and because of generative AI and AI new clients are also coming in with different uh, requests. So where does the opportunity exist as of today in like I mentioned being comfortable with both structured and unstructured data that's Again, like we were talking about, it's just not about being technically competent. We should be able to form and thread a story using that data science or data because most of the CXOs uh, won't be able to understand the nitty gritties of a typical machine learning model. On a daily basis, yes, we work with models. We work on estimating if it's a B2C business to customer kind of um, process. We we try to anticipate or we try to predict what is the change in or a new customer behavior the set of data engineers allow and solution architect they automate the whole intensive processes from end to end like i mentioned that it is required to have a self-supporting workbench for data science to operate and lp is a one key subset because most of the work that happen or again keeping the business stakeholders in mind most of the operations that are happen uh, happens in unstructured free-flowing language so nlp which stand which is an acronym for natural language processing plays a key role and anomaly detection is another kind of uh, business use case the subset of which is it could be anomaly in terms of um, fraud detection, it could be an anomaly in terms of a different picture for a different Aadhaar card holder. So a lot many use cases exist in the field of anomaly. Okay, let's uh, move ahead. So continuing on the thought of post COVID-19 era, there are different, uh, if you would have uh, read, there were a lot of supply chain problems that has happened because of a lot of restriction on the global routes. And there was a lot of cash and liquidity crisis. So now we are seeing our clients who are in this field, they are using advanced machine learning techniques to solve these problems. So I'll just take one example in interest of time. How do are they resorting to solve their liquidity and cash uh, crisis is having tools telling let's say a bank for an example which is required by law country specific law to maintain certain portion of their asset as in liquid cash but the idea is for them their the whole business a bank which is primarily into lending business their business expands only if they can dispose of the uh, cash 
which is lined with them and create more lending opportunities. So because of this dichotomy, machine learning is being currently used to find the sweet spot where we are following the different kind of law of different countries to maintain the basic minimum required cash flows but we are also trying to expand our business so this is one of the field post covid 19 era where the business are finding their footing again and trying to optimize their operations disrupted supply chains we've talked about so there was a lot of uh, disruption in supply chains globally so we are helping currently with one of the global shipping uh, the players in optimizing their route so there are no problems there are no delays so again machine learning finds a very beautiful use case there okay let's uh, move ahead so coming specifically moving from the global scenarios coming is specifically to individuals and uh, um, fresh candidates like you what are the factors that you should consider be before investing into an mln ai course so uh, it is about uh, are we if you're learning the a uh, ai or ml in the difficult way or are we choosing a course that lands you, you a job so helping an individual land a job be, even before that just from the sake of having the knowledge of the field obviously individual learning helps you a lot there is a lot of uh, not denying the fact that there are a lot of channels there are a lot of um, information centers on the on internet world where you can um, we, you can do the self-learning but the biggest problem that we have seen is that even though self-learning is important usually you will get overwhelmed with the content that is there and the disciplined way of following and structure route to land eventually the job so the opportunity that, that we see in collaborating with big institutes and premium institutes like LPO is that you can construct a path wherein you can guide the students and the curious minds to have a very structured and disciplined way of having your end objective achieved. So what happens? What are the benefits that we see that you will have a very live training session? You will have interactive sessions. The batch size can be... Um, kept to the uh, on optimal point so that it's not too less or it's not too high. You will have multiple projects when you are working with a corporate plus institute partnership. You will have regular assignments, case study. You will have courses. You can ask your questions. You will get a feedback. And so the whole loop, loop is complete. And of course, you also get an opportunity to, to work with industry experts who are solving real life problems day in and day out. Okay, moving ahead. So how should you invest in a career in data science so we've tried to uh, like cut down the chaos and bring it down to simple four steps is you get professionally certified from uh, in ai courses and of course lpo is the big player and the right place where you would go get those certificates so the step two of following the industry of your choice why is it important like we were saying before it is imperative to have business knowledge or domain knowledge to make sense of the machine learning data output so it's very important that you in few months or few days or with help of your seniors and acad professors find the industry which excites you the most and then use data science projects in that industry <coughs> using all the uh, industry experts or a platform like LinkedIn, you can connect with domain experts and seek them as your mentors. So because they are working with real life world problems. So, and of course they can help a lot. And the fourth and the final step is that, or, like I said, you can't never discount uh, self-learning. So work on a lot of case studies, competition and internship to get an experience and keep following this pat pattern of giving tests solving business case studies and upskilling yourself constantly because technology will change very rapidly okay so one one last closing thought on this process uh one in this process is that the most important thing which uh, we have seen with our juniors and in ourselves is to you have to constantly upskill but Try to work in the field of your choice because the feature engineering part that we were talking about or making sense of the data, it makes a lot of sense or it becomes a little traumatic if you are working in the industry, which is not of your liking. Because if let's say you are working in retail industry and you like retail industry, so you would be able to make good machine learning models, which would actually solve the real world problems. So I think we are almost uh, there. Yes, I think that's the end of uh, the presentation. Thank you so much. And if we have any questions, we can take it. 
Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Vishad Dubey. So it was wonderful watching you talking on data science, machine learning, and AI with the trans-org analytics in depth. So now I would request to the admission nominee, Mr. Ashish Kumar Sharma to be on the screen. Over to you, Mr. Ashish. Thank you so much, Mr. Mishad. Uh, you have invited us uh, participants very well. Thank you so much. Pleasure. So, I'm going to share my screen. Please give me a confirmation. Is it visible or not? Is it visible, Dalvinder? Yes, the screen is visible. You can continue, Mr. Ashish. Right. So by not taking much of the time, I would like to start with the accreditations. Every professional university does have. The most important aspect is now you have learned about uh, TransOg and uh, other aspects of the new age digital era, new age technology, as uh, we have already discussed about it, that it is it is an oil, it is a kind of fuel, right, the technical era. So uh, it has become important that from where you need to do this uh, degree, uh, make yourself qualified. Right, so lovely professional university is one of the best university in Northern India uh, to provide you such quality education. So let us start with the accreditations and approvals. This is the thing which I want to flaunt. Um, now we are NAC A++ grade university and uh, we have got the 3.68 score on four point scale. Uh, it is a higher score in the first cycle of accreditation among all the government and private universities. Now, one more very important thing, which is NBA, National Board of Accreditation. LPU has got NBA accreditation, Tier 1 Washington, got for four BTEC programs. And of course, uh, CSE is one of them. CSC, ECE, Mechanical Engineering, and Civil Engineering. So CSC is one of them. Few more accreditations are there. Pharmacy Council of India, Council of Architecture, Bar Council of India, uh, uh, Indian Association of Physiotherapists. We are a part of Association of Indian Universities, International Association of Universities. Now, here comes the star placements. Why we are uh, getting our ourselves qualified uh, for the bread and butter, right? So, we are providing not only quality education, but we are also taking care of your bread butter in the coming future, which we are going to get through our placement. So, we have a separate career services. Uh, we have a division of career services. More than 40 people are working over there. Uh, and they are striving towards tie-ups with the company of uh, uh, global nomenclature, right? So a record-breaking package of rupees 3 crore, we have uh, uh, a person, a Hari Krishna Mahato, who has got 64 lakh of package, then 49.4 lakh package is there, 48 lakh package is there, 46.4 lakh package is there, right? So 54.75. So these are the... Uh, good placements of our students. There are few names who have got one crore plus packages. Dukkash, Gautam, Neha Mahajan, Nathaj, Simpson, who and few others are there in the list. So uh, if, I if I talk about the rankings, the World University ranking, we are at the 23rd spot among all the top universities of India, uh, both government and private. Words University with real impact, we stood at second spot. In utter ranking of institution and innovation achievements, we are at the third spot. And not only the education, we also take care of uh, your inclusive growth, where we provide you uh, 
a career, a good career in extracurricular activities and co-curricular activities. You are uh, we we try to always uh, push you into such activities which are uh, inculcated to your curriculum as well, and they will definitely going to bring an inclusive growth in your uh, character building and in your uh, identity. Neera Chopra, Manpreet Singh, Bajrang Punia, they all are our notable students who have got good glory into the sports genre. And here it is the thing which I need to uh, flaunt over here. Uh, it was the moment 106th Indian Science Congress uh, where our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji was on the campus to inaugurate this Indian uh, Science Congress in 2019. His Holiness Dalai Lama ji, he was here on the campus in one of the convocations of the university to uh, share their share their uh, valuable inputs to our students and to provide degrees. In a frame, you can uh, witness two presidents of two countries, Sri Pranam Mukherjee and Sri Hamid Karzai, the president of uh, Afghanistan. And uh, the third one is our Honorable Chancellor, sir, who is currently a member of parliament in Dar es Salaam. Late Sri Arun Jaitley ji, he was there on the campus to open LQ Startup School. We also take care of entrepreneurs and uh, we uh, Encourage them to start uh, to make their own startup, uh, to become an entrepreneur, to generate the employment in the global industry. Sri Venkaiah Naidu he was here on the campus in one of the convocations of the university. Dohar Gopal Das, they uh, you you can see the exposure level. Uh, such such personalities are coming to the university campus to uh, share their experiences and uh, to provide inputs to bring your uh, brighter future and of course these people are also coming not to uh, not just to dance but to share their lifestyle struggles and experiences Mahindra Singh Dhoni few other actors dance director Prabhudeva We have registered ourselves in the Guinea's world record for playing Bhangra at a single venue, the largest team. This sort of infrastructure you will have in lovely professional university. This is an open air theater. This is an auditorium with a capacity of 2,500 people under the one roof. This is a Mac lab. Each school has their own library, but we do have our central library where uh, we are having more than 9 lakh books and you can uh, get issued uh, with as per your curriculum without any cost. So this is the heart of the university. It is the center point of the university. Uh, it is a uni center. It, it is a shopping mall inside the university campus. Behind this building, we have our own hotel where uh, School of Hospitality uh, they get the practical exposure, hands-on practice in the hotel only. Let us go inside the uni mall where you can meet all your needs inside the campus only. This is a complex where you can buy things of your needs. A world-class gymnasium inside the campus only. Even the bowling LA is there. 50 bedded hospital is also available. So this is a unipolis and uh, we are also taking care of energy generation. You can see the solar panels over the roof. This is a panoramic view of the university campus. We are a lush green campus and uh, we have taken eight spot in the India in terms of cleanest and greenest campus. This is a night view of the university campus. A ragging free, it is completely ragging free campus. 
fully secured with cctv surveillances and we have a world class indoor sports complex you just name a court and we will have it for you badminton courts shooting range is there basketball court even the squash court is there a world class olympic level swimming pools are available this is an aerial view of our indoor sports complex so one of the <clears throat> dynamic feature of lovely professional university is study grant uh for example if you are an engineering aspirant in iits or in uh, nit certainly you are going to take uh, you have you have taken j mains and of course advanced as well so on the contrary if you have qualified lpns and you are among top 500 candidates and you are able to produce your admission in any of the nit or in iit we will give you 1 lakh rupees study grant as a pride for you we because we respect the academic excellence and this feature is not only for engineering students but for the medical students as well management students design law and hotel management students so now let's go live i'm going to tell you that how you can search the program on lovely professional university's website you just need to put url www.lpu.in and uh, this way you will be here on the university's website you just need to scroll at admissions and you will uh, you you can easily search the programs after after 10 after diploma after graduation so as we are uh, going to search for the btec honors computer science engineering data science data engineering in tap with trans all see the specialized x factors we do have in it specialization and in industry certi uh, certifications we will provide you see many as well uh, courses by the industry ex experts like <coughs> mr dube do camps and uh, data thons are also there so uh, let me explain the eligibility criteria for this a candidate must have 60% marks in 12th standard uh, physics mathematics and english subjects must be studied and subject to qualifying lpns or cvt or je mains so let me tell you about the scholarships we do have for you we provide scholarships on the basis of uh, your qualifying exams that is 12 if you will be having 80 to 89.9 percent aggregate marks in your 12 you will get scholarship of third category and if you will be having your percentage from 90 to 94.9 in the standard you will have a second category scholarship and if you are having 95 percent or more than 95 percent scholarship in your third standard you are going to get the top most scholarship we are providing to anyone who is studying in lovely professional university right so this was a scholarship on the basis of your previous qualification and now i'm going to tell you about the scholarship on the basis of lq nest which is our own entrance exam we prepare a merit in which if you will be among category cut off 3 uh, we we prepare a merit of a set of students who are appearing in W professional university the LPU nest national entrance and scholarship test which obviously uh, provides you an uh, entrance qualification and a scholarship so uh, if you will be among category 3 you will be considered as equivalent to the student who is having 80% or more than 80% marks in 12th standard and if you will be among category 2 cut off you will be considered as equivalent to the student who is having 90% or more than 90% in 12th standard but if you are having 60% marks in 12th standard and you are getting category 1 cut off scholarship in lpu nest then you will be considered as a student who is having 95% marks or more than 95% marks in spite of the fact you are having lesser percentage in your 12th standard if you will be able to score 
good in LPU NEST. And if you are able to get category one cutoff, you will be considered as equivalent to your student who is having 95% marks in first standard and going to get the maximum, the topmost scholarship to study here in Lovely Professional University. So uh, this is quite evident that we do respect academic excellence. If you are go, if you are getting good number of score in our own entrance exam, definitely we are going to give you a handsome amount of scholarship, not only in one semester, but throughout the degree. In all the eight semesters, you are going to get. Once the scholarship will be conferred to you in first semester, it will remain same till the last semester. Right? <clears throat> so now let me take you to the scholarship on the basis of CUET. We do provide scholarship on the uh, basis of CUET. We do provide scholarship on the basis of J mains examination. Few other uh, scholarships are also there. If you are having uh, any innovation uh, project uh, on your name, and if you have any startup, if you are an entrepreneur, just share your uh, uh, entrepreneur project, entrepreneurship project with us, and uh, we will verify it, and our panel will confer a scholarship on the basis of that particular entrepreneurial project. Few other scholarships are also there. Uh, we provide scholarship to the defense and their de defense personnel and their dependents. So, in which CAPF and paramilitary personnel and their dependents also comes. So, let me explain how to contact us. You can <clears throat> you can contact us at 018245170 you can start a chat on whatsapp with us with our with our uh, expert counselors through chat you you just need to ping on whatsapp at number 9852569000 you can also write an email to us at admissions at the rate lpu.co.in for the general queries you can email us at info at the rate lpu.co.in right now we are uh, having our admission offices. Our admission counselors are available pan India. You just need to click LPU in your town and you will come to know about our admission offices in your own state. You just need to select your state over here. Let me take an example of, uh, say, let us select Punjab. So you can easily get an information of our admission counselors and our offices in various cities of Punjab. In Bhatinda, we have our uh, camp office where Vishal Singh is there, Sahil Singh is there, in Ludhiana, Arun Kumar is there, Nitin Khosla is there, in Amritsar, Tarandeep Singh, and Chandra Agarwal is there. So, similarly, you can fetch the admission counselor's details as per your state, and you can fetch the details of our uh, admission counselors uh, on uh, Google Map as well, right? So, this is all from my side, Halavinder. If, if you have any questions, you can ask. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ashish Kumar Sharma. As I can see, there are some questions from our participants. Uh, can we take questions of Mr. Vishad, Dr. Amritpal, and Mr. Ashish? Thanks for giving me a chance to address your questions. And now let's start with the first question. Uh, Mega is asking here, how can a career with trans-org analytics enhance your skills in data science, machine learning, and AI? All right, uh, I'll take this question. So I, I understand the question was how to build career with Transog or how is the career? Yeah, how to build a career. All right. So uh, this I think this is the right platform, the collaboration that exists between uh, Transorg and uh, LPO. We all, 
eventually have the program details, the internship program details then that professors can talk about. And the skill sets that are required, the second aspect of the question is, of course, having graduation knowledge of the different features or skill sets that we were talked about, understanding of maths, comfort level with a little bit of with programming languages, and if possible, about SQL also. But more than that, what is required is the intent to build the career in data science. Thank you so much, Mr. Vishad. Mr. Ashish Adil is asking here, how are the placements done in the LPU and what's the process? Like, this is a quite interesting question for which every student seeks for, <clears throat> seeks an answer for. So, uh, the process of the placement in lovely professional university is right from the beginning, we provide an opportunity to each and every student to enroll themselves into the personality and health program, that is PEP programs, where we, uh, we teach them about uh, the soft skills and uh, how to uh, how to uh, prepare themselves for the interviews. Uh, and not only this, <clears throat> uh, we are uh, striving towards uh, many hackathons for the preparation for, uh, uh, for 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 their better preparation to take the interviews. And uh, uh, we 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 provide them opportunity to enroll themselves in the placement and, and uh, right from the starting of the third uh, third year uh, they they start getting opportunities to sit, uh, sit into the various placement rights thank you so much mr ashish dilpreet is asking here what makes a trans org analytics a leading choice for aspiring data scientists and ai professionals Okay, uh, I'll have to take that question. See, um, basically, we've been in the industry for almost uh, 16 years now. So we are completely focused on data science. And uh, the exposure that we get, um, all the team members who are working with uh, us, if we work with big clients in solving the real life business problem. So it's just not about doing the back end work. The satisfaction that we get as a team member is that we build something which helps business solve their problems. And of course, there would because of that process, we learn a lot and remunerations, at least I would think, are decent. Thank you so much, Mr. Vishad, Mr. Amritpal and Mr. Ashish. Once again, I hope uh, all the participants got the answers from our experts. As we come to the end of this webinar, I want to express my deepest gratitude to our experts for sharing their valuable insights and expertise with us. Your presence, enthusiasm, and active participation have made this experience truly special. Hopefully the attendees found this webinar to be valuable and will be able to utilize the information for better decision-making regarding your admissions. If anyone wants to assess this webinar again, they can visit our website that is lpu.in or can be assessed on YouTube also. Stay connected with us for future webinars until we meet again. With the permission of my seniors, I would be signing off this webinar. Take care and goodbye. Have a nice day. Thank you.